Genesis, Earth, and galaxies, mysterious and timeless. Since the emergence of humans on Earth around 300,000 years ago and throughout our evolution, the great civilizations and societies only appeared 10,000 years ago. And only the last century has seen significant technological discoveries and advances. There is still a long way to go, but modern science has proved that many of the beliefs and hypotheses of the past are incorrect, inefficient, and dangerous. For thousands of years, human beings have made hypotheses to explain natural events that were consistent with the knowledge, science, and accepted beliefs of the time. But today, we know that most of these assumptions were wrong. Nevertheless, Many of these hypotheses are still embedded into societal mindsets, religions, and cultures. The last 30 years have brought the greatest potential for technological advances and communication methods the human race has seen. Remarkably and disappointingly though, people's knowledge and awareness has not grown along with scientific discoveries and advances. Throughout human history, some aspects haven't changed. When we look at the people around us, we notice any apparent physical differences between people, such as skin color, eye color, hair color, body shapes, and disabilities. We will seek to explore these differences based on an evolutionary and scientific perspective. We are visiting one of the most prominent biological scientists, Dr. Hissam Nazari to seek answers to the following questions. Are there different races of humans? What causes our apparent physical differences? How, if at all, does skin color affect our human identities? What does modern science reveal about the human differentiation and relationships? 14 billion years have passed since the inception of the universe that we live in. Life on Earth started about four billion years ago. But the Earth is not our mother. Our mother is the numerous galaxies which give rise to the elements during the birth and death of stars. Such elements gave rise to life on Earth about four billion years ago. The Earth, therefore, could more accurately be considered our nanny, a nanny that's more special than a mother. Our predecessors, small group of inquisitive adventurers, left the land of Africa about 100,000 years ago and commenced a historical journey. They traveled for about 50,000 years and reached Australia. 40,000 years ago, they reached Europe and they reached America about 20,000 years ago through the use of fire and salt. Looking back, we are all Africans, whether we now reside in America, Europe, Asia, or elsewhere. Each individual has a mother and father. When we travel one generation back, we have two grandmothers and two grandfathers. As we go farther back, we have four grandmothers and four grandfathers and then 8, 16, 32, 64. We only need to go back 10 generations to find 1,024 individuals that could have contributed to one's formation. When we go back 20 generations, we have over 1 million individuals that could have contributed to your formation, composition, and DNA. One cannot find this many people under one roof or from a small town or even a small city. One finds these many people across large land masses in countries and across continents. The migration of the relatively limited number of people from Africa gave rise to all of us, our noble and colorful language and our deep culture. No two people are alike. No one in the past has been like you and no one is currently like you. 
all people are diverse and different, but we all emanated from the same land. Therefore, what we refer to as race has no basis in the scientific world. Humans all belong to the same race of Homo sapiens, Homo sapiens, 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 sapiens. In the scientific world, in order to differentiate between different races or species, there has to be a certain percentage of genes that have to differ between groups. As human beings, we do not even get close to reaching that threshold. For our genes are 100% identical to one another. These genes have different expressions. The differences in expression are less than one-tenth of one percent. Consequently, what is incorrectly referred to as race has no genetic basis and is in fact merely our differences in culture. Culture is defined as the culmination of our teachings from one generation to another in the absence of genetic transfer. Let's visit the following examples. Historical racist theories which postulated the superiority of the European civilization over the rest of the world were put forth based on false scientific hypotheses combined with unilineal theories of social progress. Furthermore, they frequently cited the idea of survival of the fittest, a term associated with evolutionary competition ideas coined by Herbert Spencer in 1864 and renamed Social Darwinism in the 1940s. Charles Darwin himself opposed the concept of existence of rigid racial differences in The Descent of Man in 1871, in which he argued that humans were all of a single species that shares a common descent. He recognized racial differences as varieties of humanity and emphasized the close similarities between people of all races in mental abilities, tastes, dispositions, and habits. Take Tiger Woods, for example. His father is Chinese and Native American, and his mother is from Thailand with a Dutch background. So who is Tiger Woods? Why do we consider Tiger Woods the first black race world golf champion and not the first Chinese world champion? Shakira is half Colombian and half Lebanese. Her name is in fact Arabic and comes from the word tanks. But when we think of Shakira, we consider her Colombian. We do not consider her an Arab. This is because of the more prominent expression of her Latin culture. Biologically, we all get more DNA from our mothers and not from our fathers. And we spend the first nine months of our lives within our mothers. Additionally, the very first cell of our being is from our mother. This cell is about 100,000 times the size of the sperm cell and the sole provider of our cell mitochondria, the power plant of our cellular structure, and who we are. Having said that, let's now take President Barack Obama as an example. His father was from Kenya, and his mother was from Kansas with European descent. Why do we call Obama the first black race president? As we share the same genetics, it's without any doubt that we all have the same red color blood and heart and yellowish gray bones. We have the same color nerves and brain. Why are we then fixated on the color of skin, which is one of the expressions of the same genes that we share? These differences in expression are what give our world beauty and diversity. So, to say that with 100% identical genes, we have different races, is a fallacy. It's not based, it's not based on, science. on science. It's merely a representation of an uneducated and egotistical thought process. This is a very dangerous and detrimental thought process. I hope 
we could once and for all dismiss the incorrect concepts of royalty and superior descendancy. The Aryan race, the black race, the white race, the Asian race, Spanish race, the Jewish race, the Arab race are incorrect from a biologic standpoint. They are harmful and dangerous and we need to say goodbye to these nullified notions. After all, you could be Adolf Hitler's daughter and become Mother Teresa, or you could be Mahatma Gandhi's son and turn into Adolf Hitler. The gene of aggression, the gene of faith, the gene of being cursed, the gene of kindness, the gene of love, the gene of ambition, the gene of short-sightedness, none have any genetic basis in reality, and there are no genes for them. They are non-scientific, detrimental, and dangerous concepts. Don't look for a gene for intrinsic badness, for you will not find it. Don't look for a gene for meanness, a gene for determination, a gene for love and sacrifice. They are all non-scientific, detrimental, and dangerous. Through the grace of inclusivity, a foundation forms that gives rise to each person in the confines of culture and through the malleability of our brain and thought process. This wholeness is an amalgamation of genes, epigenes, and our surroundings. It's through culture that this portrait becomes more and more colorful. Our fate and future is interlocked in this lucid rainbow, the rainbow of life. Therefore, we could surmise that it's not the individual that travels into space. It's collective people that travel into space through the grace of culture and education. It's not the individual human who travels to the moon. It's human beings that travel to the moon through education and culture. And it's not the individual human being who invents, but collective human beings who invent through culture, selflessness, and teamwork as they look after one another. Generally, sociologists recognize race as a social construct. According to their theories, although the concepts of race are based on observable biological characteristics, any conclusions drawn on the basis of those observations are heavily influenced by cultural ideologies. Nevertheless, racism as an ideology sadly exists at both the individual and institutional societal levels. Racism can be broadly defined to encompass individual and group prejudices and acts of discrimination that result in material and cultural advantages conferred on a majority or a dominant social group. Like everything else, Racism, too, has evolved over human history. Racism has shifted from blatant to more covert expressions of racial prejudice. The newer, more hidden and less easily detectable forms of racism, which are embedded in social processes and structures, are more difficult to explore and challenge. While overt or explicit racism has become increasingly taboo in many countries, research suggests that implicit racism has been subconsciously maintained even among those who display explicit egalitarian attitudes. <laughs>